Do you yeah. think that if the Anunnaki are real and if, if Nibiru really exists and there's another planet with highly intelligent beings that are far more advanced than us, if that's the case, do you think there's more advanced and more advanced and more, just like yeah. we are mm -hmm. to chimpanzees, they are to us, yeah. and then another race is to them, and then it yeah. just keeps going on and on forever until you're God. Absolutely. I believe there's a, there's levels to the game, just like there's levels in terms of how we live on this planet. Yes. You know, we have the first world, second world, third world, just here on Earth. Now, magnify that on, as a fractal, as a universe as a whole, you have civilizations that are a million, two million, maybe even a billion years ahead and every universe progress, every every I'm not universe, every civilization progressing within the universe at a specific rate. So you can have beings that have already maybe even shed their corporeal bodies and only exist as beings of energetic light. And then you have everything all the way back down towards us. In the Emerald Tablets of Thoth, he actually says that he has achieved the ability to incarnate at will on and in the plane he desires. He claims to be able to incarnate whenever he wants and even into other dimensions which is wild. That's next level. Yeah, that's next but level. It does make sense that if we're capable of doing what we're doing, we were talking about your phone, the Samsung mm -hmm. Galaxy S24 right. Ultra with zooms and all this <laughs> different shit. That's magic yeah. to someone just 200 years ago. And if we keep if it keeps going mm -hmm. and you keep like playing this out as far as possible, it kind of makes sense that there would be levels to the kind of intelligent life that exists in the universe beyond our comprehension. Yeah. Would you have you talked to Terrence Howard? Do you know his theory about how planets are created? Mm -hmm. That it's just things ejecting from the sun over billions and billions of years, and that there's a Goldilocks zone where you can create life, right? And that's where the people are. Yeah. And then as this Goldilocks zone gets, you have to be super technologically proficient, right? In order to control your environment to the extent that you no longer require the sun mm -hmm. in order to keep you alive. That kind of makes sense if yeah. the Bureau is out there past Pluto. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. It, it makes sense to that they... Because I just talked to him a couple hours ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, so I used to, we were talking about that wave dude, conjugations we... and everything. Fuck yeah. me up for like three days. <laughs> 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 I left this podcast for three days. I was like, God damn. First of all, how the fuck is he so smart? <laughs> like, how would you ever imagine yeah. that a dude who's an actor on a television show or, right. or in a movie is that yeah. smart? Right, like, right. Like, freaky smart. Right. But but the, his theory about the creation of planets, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, it makes a lot we of sense. We watch stuff fly off the sun all mm -hmm. the time, mm -hmm. and if that this matter over time yeah. would coalesce mm -hmm. and become a planet. Yeah, it creates an accretion disk, and uh, everything in space creates accretion disks. So once that matter, what is that word accretion? Accretion. Disc? Yeah. What does accretion that mean? Disc. So once you have a certain amount of mass in space. It instantaneously, on its own, wants to create this circular, like the shape of our Milky Way galaxy, it wants to start swir circling and swerving around itself. And then as it does that, it creates, begins to create friction. And as that, that friction increases, the, the, the matter begins to collapse in towards each other, all right, based on its own energy. And then it then forms a ball. And that then builds and attracts more mass until it builds into a moon or a planet or whatever. That that was one of yeah. the craziest ones that Terrence brought up was the octagon on Saturn. Yeah, was it Saturn? Yeah, it's Saturn. Yeah, Saturn. Saturn. That when you look at the opt octagon on Saturn, that it, it it's mimicked in the model that they've right. created by yeah. using a, a, the whole idea that he really blew my mind with was the Goldilocks zone idea mm -hmm. that planets reach a certain distance from the sun and that's when life starts happening yeah. and this is a normal force that happens everywhere in the universe and mm -hmm. as time goes on that planet's going to get further and further from the sun yep. and then it's going to lose its ability to do that and then a new planet will move into the Goldilocks zone right. and that is also going to become like us mm -hmm. and then so if you are following this idea if this idea makes sense it means that this is just this sort of natural process that these intelligent creatures go through. And even though we're looking at like AI and we're mm -hmm. looking at technologies like, oh, my God, we can't even be people anymore. Yeah. Well, guess what? We can't be people anymore right. because we're not going to make it if right. we don't. Like, yeah. it, there's, there's a timeline. It seems like you're only going to live 100 years, so it's no big deal. But humans, if we keep going like mm -hmm. a few million years, we're going to have a real problem. Yeah, yeah. A billion years from now, we're not going to be around anymore. No. And then there's going to come a time where the sun doesn't exist anymore. Exactly. So if you get so intelligent that you can escape the boundaries of the physical world mm -hmm. and you can move throughout the cosmos wherever you want, yeah. then you've escaped. Right. You've escaped this fear 
but it's almost like there's an intelligent test, yeah. an intelligence test that life goes through. Mm-hmm. Like we're going to give you all the tools, just like you're in the womb. You're in the womb of Mother Earth. Yeah. We're going to give you all the tools, but you got to get out of the house. Yeah, at a certain point in time, got to get yeah. out of the house. You're 24. You're still living at home. Yeah. Get the <laughs> fuck out of the house. <laughs> They're waiting for us to grow up. Yeah. This is what you know. A hum, human human beings are like babies right now. It's a civilization trying to learn how to walk, and right now we're barely crawling. And then we plop down on our stomach and everybody screams and cries. But we're getting to the point eventually where we'll go to the edge of a table and pull ourselves up. And then we'll take a couple of steps and then we'll fall again. Everybody will think it's all over. Oh, my God, we were doing so good and it collapsed again. But no, that's just a fall. The baby will pull itself back up. It'll cry less and it'll take more steps until it falls again, until it can get this controlled fall. And that's the definition of walking, controlling your fall. So we're in that process now. Like you said, this is a proving ground for us to be able to develop consciously, spiritually, ascend to higher levels. Uh, And eventually, I believe, I'm pretty optimistic for mankind that we will get through uh, this period. Well, that's a beautiful thing to hear. I love when people are optimistic because I'm always like, I don't know which one I know. (laughs) I, I tend to be optimistic. Well, you know, it proves what these ancient beings were doing. They were creating breakaway civilizations throughout the entire Milky Way galaxy because of what you just said. Mm. The fact that, uh, you know, planets won't be habitable forever. Even Earth. Let's say Earth never moved and stayed right where it's at in the Goldilocks zone. We're going to lose our control over the weather because the, the moon is moving away at a few centimeters every single year. And as the moon backs off of Earth, our weather patterns are going to get more hectic and chaotic and the wobble is going to be uncontrollable to the point where life won't be able to exist. Not our kind of life won't be able to exist on this planet. So just losing the moon alone in a few million years is going to destroy us. So we have to create breakaway civilizations. We have to get out of here, which is what all these other advanced civilizations in, the, in these ancient texts have done. Well, it only makes sense if, if Terence is correct about this idea of the Goldilocks zone. It only makes sense. And if there are other planets somewhere in another galaxy or ours that have the same exact sort of features Mm -hmm. water the same temperature the same mixture of amino acids and whatever the hell else is here that makes life and then it happens there too it just makes sense that some places are going to be more stable so they're going to have less natural disasters so Mm -hmm. like people will evolve faster and longer they'll they'll exist longer but then you know there's the argument that the natural disasters are actually good because the natural disasters knock us back down Mm -hmm. if we're about to destroy everything, knock us back down to some much more primitive version of ourselves and then we have to rebuild society again over thousands of years, which to the universe is the blink of an eye. That's the blink of an eye, you're right. 